I, I um, made up a few new problems for uh, the hypergeometric random variable. Um, so now you've seen some with the binomial Poisson. The last worksheet was geometric negative binomial, which there's that nice connection. And now hypergeometric, which is really most similar to the binomial. It's, I don't want to say it's exactly, but it's very similar to the binomial, except the big difference is with a binomial, you are sampling with replacement, and a hypergeometric, you're sampling without replacement. So, for example, when you take something you know out of a hat, you leave it out of the hat. When you draw a lottery number, you leave it out. Um, you don't, again, you don't replace the item. So every time you um, make a draw or make a selection, your sample space goes down. So here's the exact same problem I did um, as a binomial, the first binomial example, but this time I'm doing it as a hypergeometric because I'm not, um, when I pull out a ticket, I'm not replacing it in the hat. So a hat contains 12 tickets. Um, in a hypergeometric, that's our population size, so um, n is equal to 12. And there are seven blue, so seven blue and five white. And I'm going to draw three tickets. That's my sample size. Uh, after a ticket is drawn, I'm not going to put it back into the hat again. That's what's making this a hypergeometric instead of a binomial. So the probability of getting a blue changes every time you draw out a ticket. And X is going to be the number of blue tickets that I draw from the hat. So um, first, I'm just going to build this guy's probability mass function. So X is the number of blues drawn. So P of X is binomial. So I think of this like as the lottery example or Keno example. You have these bins of goods and bads and you're drawing out of both of them over your total population. So um, first of all, binomial, there are um, seven blues and I want to figure out how many of them are going to be blue draws. So that's X. And then also on top, um, binomial. Again, I have two bit, you know, I'm thinking about two categories. I have blues or whites. So uh, five choose and um, the X's that aren't white are going to turn, or aren't blue are going to turn out to be white. So this is going to be three minus X because I'm choosing three of them. And on the bottom, I'm dividing by the total number of ways to choose three tickets out of 12. So you can kind of see the nice property too that um, these two, well, let's highlight it, 7 and 5 are adding up to 12 down here. So 12 is my population size, and the population is made up into two categories, um, 7 blues or 5 whites. And then I'm drawing 3, and x of them will be out of the blues, and 3 minus x of them will be out of the whites. And so that's my function, and this is defined for... Um, there could be no blues, one blue, um, all the way up to three blues. And notice I can't go beyond three. I mean, I could go up to seven, but I'm not drawing seven. So it's the minimum of how many you're sampling and how many your, um, what do you want to say, the, the sample size of blues has in it. So let's just show you this is valid. So P of X is a binomial seven comma X times binomial five comma three minus x divided by binomial 12 choose three and i'm going to sum p of x from x equals zero to three and we'll get of course one and what was the question go back up we'll determine the probability that two are blue and one is white so i want to find the probability that x is equal to two so um, sum p of x from x equal two to two that's so probably I have two blues, or I showed you before you can make a sequence. This is the probability of zero up to three blues. So you can see that adds up to one. Um, expected number of blues, um, P of X times X, X equals zero to three, seven fourths blues. And um, yeah, so there, there's a hypergeometric. It's the big difference. Yeah, you're not putting the items back in when you draw them. Here's another one. Okay, so um, hypergeometric, and uh, well, I should just 
obsessively take these away. You don't have to. Um, okay, so on a Monday morning, a class of, there's 50 students, so that's my population size. So um, let me write that. Well, let me just put that here. Uh, N is equal to 50. Okay, includes 10 who failed to prepare. So um, I'm going to call those my defectives. I know that sounds bad. So 10, there's 10 defective students who didn't prepare. And uh, what do we want to call the other? Well, I'll just say capital N minus D. Those are the kids that did prepare. There's 40 of those. Okay, so those are my two categories in the numerator. The instructor is going to choose five different students to work at the chalkboard. So, um, okay, that would be my sample size. So there's what I need for a hypergeometric. So let X be the number of unprepared students chosen to work at the board. So the mass function is a binomial. Let me see, 10 choose X, because I'm trying to figure out how many out of the unprepared students go up, times binomial 40 select 5 minus X divided by binomial, let's see, 50 choose 5. And this is valid for x's from 0 up to, well, we could go up to 10 if, there, if we selected 10 students, but we only have 5. So 0, 1, 2, up to 5. And that guy's valid. You can sum him. He is. Um, what's the probably at least, okay, so then we're answering questions. So let's go ahead and put this in as, no, I don't want all of it. Just put this in. No. Let's see. Edit. Undo, drag, and drop. Good. Let's just copy this. That's our P of X. Okay, and what's the probability that at least one of the 10 unprepared students is chosen? So, some P of X, X equal 1 to 5, at least 1. Um, or we could have done 1 minus uh, sum of P of X, X equals 0 to 0. One minus probability of none, either way. How many do you expect to not be prepared out of those 50? Um, P of X times X, X equals 0 to 5, 1. Okay, that makes sense. And uh, I think that's pretty good for that example. Mm, hopefully that hypergeometric, I mean, again, you know, when I choose a student, I don't put them back into the 50 students. I'm not going to choose them again to go up to the board if I already chose them and they worked a problem. Maybe I, maybe I should make that more clear in the problem, but... Um, well, I guess it is uh, five different students. You're not going to choose the same student twice. So once you choose one, they're not back in the, in the, what do you see, in the population size to choose again. Last one, let's do another hypergeometric. I put three on here. Uh, hypergeometric is very popular in quality control, figuring out, um, you know, when you do what we call it acceptance sampling, if you have like um, a population and you can only sample so many and you're going to make a decision whether to keep or reject a lot of items you get um, based on uh, how many defects you have from your sample. So let me see a day's production of 25 televisions. So that must be capital N. Population size has four with defects. Okay, four defective. So uh, N minus D is equal to um, 21, so 21 good, 4 bad. The company inspects this product by selecting 2. Okay, so there we go, there's our um, hypergeometric. Now we have a question about it. So I'd always, again, like I write this out and then I, I always build the mass function first. Let me see, so binomial, let's see, 4 choose X times binomial. 21 choose uh, 2 minus x divided by binomial, let's see, 25 choose 2. And uh, what's the question here? Uh, let's see, the company inspects its products by selecting two sets. If at most one set has a defect, a lot is shipped. So at most one defect. Probability it's 
that's the probably at most one. What? The lot is shit. Yeah, so at most one is 49 of 50, but it's probably the lot. It's going to be shit, probably, right? The probability that it's going to be shipped is 49 out of 50. I mean, if you have two defect, I mean, if you draw two out of 25 and four defective, you're probably not going to pull that defective one out. So um, I guess I have another one down here, but I'll let, maybe I should just let you think about it. And um, if you want to have me work it out or tell you the answer later, I can do that. So this could be a nice practice. People were saying they wanted to see more problems. So here's another one. Just go ahead and do it. Send me an answer. Ask me for an answer if you'd like. Um, so that concludes the hypergeometric. And uh, I think I'll make a few more videos today.